the title says it all. Here is a selection of some of the greatest reissue dive watches that I found from many watchmakers. And this is an interesting discussion because the genre of reissue watches is becoming very popular nowadays. I would say in the last five years, more manufacturers are understanding that people want to enjoy the vintage inspired aesthetic with modern components. They want to enjoy these vintage watches, but also wear them every day. So before getting into the pieces, let's just give a brief run through about the meaning behind reissue. Because odds are you might not be seeing your favorite dive watch on this list. Reissue essentially means that it's a brand that's taken one of their original designs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, possibly the 80s, used technologies like CT scanning to create them fully, or create very faithful homages to those original pieces, but using modern components. That's essentially this area. So what makes them perfect contemporary watches today? These reissue pieces have a story, a history, a background, adds a little bit of X factor behind the watch itself. It's not just a run of the mill model. If someone asks you about it, you can actually run through a full story of their development. And that adds a little bit more depth to the watch. Since we are talking about dive watches, they are rugged, built with that idea. An old school design, but they use modern components. So you can use them every day and enjoy them with all the modern perks. Another detail that isn't addressed enough is that a lot of these reissues have the correct size, scale and proportions that many people can enjoy wearing on a daily basis. They're not oversized, they're not undersized, they're very contemporary. We're sitting in the ballpark with a lot of these watches at about 38.5 millimeters, which makes them ideal as a combination of being dress watches and sports watches. They have ceramic bezel inserts, domed crystals, tropical dials. So again, you get to enjoy the idea of this vintage aesthetic, but with components and technology that just improves their wearing experience on a daily basis. Just thinking about the materials used and the way they are assembled, very important. All of these little nuances increase the enjoyability factor, the wearability, and ultimately usability. Let's begin by looking at the Oris Divers 65. It's a very popular watch today, primarily because of their price, what you're getting for the money, the fact that this watch is inspired by an original, and the true original is the model that uses the numerals with negative space at the quarters. It's a fascinating design and very unique for that reason. It's one that really holds my attention well because it really does look like a watch from that time period where the use of fonts and typefaces was different, where the size and scale of the watch was experimented with. The clean symmetry is another factor that makes the dial look superb. And then combined with this rivet oyster styled bracelet that's also the correct size and proportions, even going to the lengths to mirror a hollow end link and a decent clasp, the watch has a great contemporary size. And we have seen various renditions of this model over the years, still extremely popular, some incorporating a two-tone bronze effect. But there's no denying that one of the factors that makes this watch great is its profile, its size on the wrist, its thickness, or should I say thinness. The Longines Skin Diver, another model that presents itself extremely well. Great proportions, presence, size, very good use of space on the dial. Cannot emphasize that enough. The bold minute track that corresponds with the bezel insert, the handset used, the symmetry between the numerals on the dial. Some models coming with a complete mesh bracelet, others coming with a sailcloth strap, the dials also vary. Some are extremely tropicalized while others are a bit more plain and basic. But again, it's another watch, as you will see in this list, that understands proportion and scale. It utilizes its dial space well, keeps everything intact. One of the telltale signs that says this is a vintage diver are the lugs. Long, pointed, not exactly tapering to fit the wrist. But again, we have to remember that these watches were very much experimental back in the day. There was no rhyme or reason about what worked and what didn't. Altogether though, extremely legible, easy to tell the time at a glance, practical to be used every day, very form fitting regardless of your wrist size and looks the business on a sailcloth strap. The Longines Legend Diver approaches this a little bit differently. The real change that we see is that the dial is pushed in ever so much and the bezel is now set inside the case. So you essentially have a compressor styled watch. It's not the most practical feature, 
But back in the day, the idea of keeping the bezel contained lessened the idea that the watch would lose its bezel while in the water. So it's much more practical when you think that this bezel being exposed would be lost or broken. The only real downside is that it takes longer for you to adjust the bezel since you're now turning a crown and not actually turning the bezel itself with your hand. Very much like the Heritage Diver, clean symmetry, good understanding of spacing, the use of plots, batons, numerals. Some models do create a more tropical effect on their dial, as we've seen already, but both of these watches really represent that period of functional tool divers. The Zodiac Seawolf, a fan favorite, a watch that's been discussed on this channel often. Incredibly, one of the first dive watches that was ever commercially sold, and even today, people adore them because they are both affordable, functional, practical, as they always have been. The Seawolf line has seen a few changes recently. If you're interested, you can go for the original, the model from the early 50s, but then you can also find the orange exotic examples from the 60s. Super Seawolfs with navy dials. All of these pieces have the same idea of using high contrast, great legibility on the dials. We can admit that some have aged better than others, but these pieces really are fun and easy going, easy wearing, and if you want that spot of color, these are perfect examples. One of the best details about the original Seawolf is how the numerals were set inside the quarters on this piece. A slight reversal to the RS-65 that we've already looked at, but the correspondence between the hour and minute hand and those quarters, coupled with the squared off batons, really interesting design. The Omega Seamaster 1957. Of course this watch made the list. It has to be spoken about. Surprisingly, it adopted quite a modern approach for its time. The presence of the watch on the wrist it's much larger than the size would suggest. That's down to the lugs being used, the size of the dial, case, relative to the bezel insert. As we have already seen, it's down to the clear symmetry between the numerals, the batons, the minute track, the handset. All of those details play a part in the equation. There's a continual use of aggression that follows throughout the watch itself. Whether we look at the case styling, the sharpness of the hands relative to the batons. The integration of the numerals also adds a very unique touch to the piece. And that's why it doubles as being something that can be worn more dressy, casually, as well as something more functional as a diving instrument. I've shared a deeper discussion on this watch if you're interested. This was the first luxury watch I ever bought for myself and it's a pleasure to wear to this day. Next to it we have the 300M ceramic, which is essentially an homage to the original dive watches, just modernized in a few places. The size has been increased ever so slightly, but the watch remains largely the same. We see it incorporates the same numeral and baton layout, the same bezel, and it's that level of cleanliness that I think appeals to a lot of people. It's not polarizing. It's not your typical Omega diver. A really great offering from the family. This modern piece especially, with texture on the dial, a sandwich dial, so you see that the batons are actually recessed inside. There are many minute details that you miss unless you look at it closely. The Certina DS PH200M. This is a legendary dive watch, and we can see that this model in particular plays on the cues that we would expect to see from Millspec inspired pieces. Fully graduated bezel, large sword hands, a pole router-esque dividing line that runs through the dial, red highlights and accents, if not a little bit heavy used, the squared off batons with all the numerals and plots, it can be quite busy visually, but the diver still manages to use its proportions correctly. All of the components appear intact and there's a great understanding of balance and proportion. Another watch on this list that could be worn with anything for any occasion. For its nominal size, it also has a great presence on the wrist. Another detail to highlight. The Doxa Sub, a real icon of the 1970s. The characteristic bright orange highlights that have since been translated into all sorts of other colors. We get yellows and blues, blacks, whites, but the real icon is the orange dial. It looks to be a very heavy duty instrument. The originals incorporating these cushion styled cases, beads of rice bracelets, square plots on the dial, which mirror the late 60s, early 70s design inspirations of the time. A square second hand, square hour and minute hand, it's definitely a watch of its time, but the reissue has managed to capture it perfectly. One of the greatest details, I believe, not only the dividing lines that run through the center of the dial, but also where the text is placed. Very unique. Doxa on the left-hand side, sub on the right. Instead of it being centered, there's this asymmetry that manages to allow those elements to counterbalance each other. This watch really screams fun. The Glasuta Original Specialist CQ. 
This watch deserves so much more attention. The original model, inspired by the 1969 variant, is a knockout. I truly believe it falls in line with the Seamaster 57 reissue when it comes down to accuracy, the correct choice of finishing, integration of bracelets, dial architecture. It's a stunning watch. It feels like a piece really made for military specification. It incorporates a lot of vintage hallmarks that we just don't see nowadays, like that extremely unique dial layout, open six at the base, huge numerals and batons that fill the architecture completely, corresponding then with the hour and minute hand, an excellent use of space in a very peculiar way. Also notice just how small the bezel insert is around the case as well. You can see that these divers at the time were experimenting with the idea of a sports watch, but the bezel still hadn't become the focal point. It was still almost an afterthought. Another detail about this watch that isn't spoken about enough is the way that the bracelet integrates with the case. Instead of using a hollow link bracelet, you notice that the articulation point is clean and seamless, much better than many other watches we see nowadays. The size and presence of this watch on the wrist, again, sits in that ballpark of 39 millimeters. Contemporary, useful, on all wrists. We've also noticed that the Panorama Date has arrived, which is a bit more of a modern take on the original CQ. This piece with the date set at the 430 position, very clean. It manages to give the dial a bit more space. It looks more breathable, but uses all of the same hallmarks that we've just seen from the previous model. Great looking watch, very different, extremely unique. The Rado Captain Cook, another outlier that isn't looked at enough. A piece that again incorporates similar cues that we've seen already, large hands, easy to see batons on the dial, a great understanding of space and proportion on the dial and how that mirrors the bezel. The minute track set in white corresponds very nicely with the batons and the hands. It's amazing to think that this design is as old as it is, but still looks extremely modern in today's sense. And these models come in all finishes, browns, greens, blues, champagnes, we could say that this watch falls into the more affordable spectrum of the list, but any enthusiast would nod their head and say, yeah, I get you. The Tudor Black Bay. Now, yes, this is not exactly a reissue, but considering what this watch has done, how it has situated itself, we can call it an amalgamation of many parts taken from the Rolex line. It does have its own inspirations in a few places, but largely it's trying to mirror the 6538, known as the Big Crown Submariner. This watch, in particular the Black Bay 58, incorporates many of the proportions and cues that we've seen already, going as far as replicating faux rivet bracelets and hollow end links, but has that iconic Submariner style dial and bezel. The real bonus is that this piece has a large crown, making winding easier. It also improves the visual aesthetic. Small highlights like a red insert on the bezel, a full gilt dial, gilt bezel, the snowflake hands, quite divisive, but that's really Tudor's invention, which is why it stays here. It's a practical, everyday wearing watch that would suit any occasion, and you really don't need me to tell you just how popular these watches are today. The Breitling Super Ocean Heritage, a watch that we mainly see on a mesh style bracelet. It's not a watch that I've spoken about often on this channel, but when you look at it, it feels like the most formal of all the dive watches we've looked at primarily because it doesn't use numerals on the dial. It sticks to batons, plots, stick markers everywhere, except when you look at the broad arrow and the sword styled hand. Very clean, and we could almost say streamlined aesthetic. Great understanding of how the parts are balanced out. A really great highlight that the date complication is at the six o'clock position. There's also a very particular model called the 57 Capsule Collection, which is even more vintage inspired than we've already seen using these fascinating rings and batons at the quarters and seeing how they match with the hands, this watch would look amazing in the dark. The Super Ocean Heritage 57 is a model that we never see. In fact, it's never spoken about at all, but really does leave its own mark. Very much like the 50s watches that we've already seen from that time, not all of them have aged so well as other pieces, but this one does leave you wanting to come back for more. The Seiko Prospects 1970s Diver Recreation. Most of us know it as the reference 6105 or the Willard. This rendition has been recreated down to the T, even mirroring the exact same strap that was worn on the original. But now this watch incorporates all of the modern components, a Prospects movement, ceramic bezel insert, sapphire crystal. This piece really defined the Seiko Diver. 
It's one of the most important divers to come out of that time period, with its large cushion case, what we would now call the turtle aesthetic, the method of how the crown integrates with the case and those crown guards. The presence and proportion on the wrist is fascinating. We can't call this an everyday suit and sleeve wearing watch because its presence is noticeable, but then on the flip side, its presence is noticeable. Great looking watch. Next to this model, we have the 62 MAS, which they now call the SLA-017, another very important dive watch to the family, also using the same components, Prospects Movement, Ceramic Bezel, Sapphire Crystal. But what's funny about this piece, this original watch, is it is a near direct copy of a Blancpain that we will be seeing in a second. The Bathyscaphe, designed originally to be the more commercially approachable model in the Blancpain line. This new model has been able to forge its own path with its use of batons, plots, its dial layout and format. It's a watch that divides opinion. It's a model that I haven't given much credit to, but in saying that, the fact that this watch has been able to find its own footing in a marketplace that is so saturated with new and trending pieces, it's very commendable. The small, we would call nipple dial markers, corresponding with the squared off syringe hands, how they then work in tandem with the bezel, we can say that it is a dial that isn't necessarily as filled up as pieces that we've seen already, but it does manage to leave its mark. It's a piece that looks very formal, undeniably a watch inspired by 70s motifs, and that's exactly what they were going for with this watch. Then we move to the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. This model, one of the longest enduring dive watches in the world, has an amazing story. The aesthetic incorporates elements that we've already seen from other pieces. This model in particular is a bit more of a modern approach, with the use of sharp batons, a blend of numerals on the dial, stepping, a sapphire capped bezel insert on a sailcloth strap. The 50 Fathoms line has seen many improvements like the introduction of the Grand Date. One of the most impressive in the line is the military, which uses cues that were adapted for the original Milspec inspired dive watches of the time. And with all of these variations, barring the 40 millimeter variants, the modern piece sitting at about 44 is a large watch. It has a great amount of presence on the wrist, making it all the more functional. What makes it less in your face is that it uses a sailcloth strap. As we move to the 40 millimeter variants, some argue the best sized watches that the family offers. We can see a piece that could be used every day, worn casually, formally. No one really knows what you're wearing, and that's kind of the secret. But within this line, there is a hidden gem, and that is known as the Barracuda, a watch originally designed for the Polish military, if I'm not mistaken. A very small run of these pieces were made, but has to be one of the best Milspec inspired Blancpain divers to date. It's virtually impossible to get your hands on these nowadays, but the use of whitened pencil hands, broad arrow hand for the seconds, the method of how the batons have been integrated around the dial with large square plots at the quarters, the simple bezel insert, and the watch's presence on the wrist. And let's not forget the red highlights that run around the dial. Most people agree that it is one of the best Milspec inspired watches that we have seen to date. Arguably one of the best diver reissues of them all, and that's why it's last on the list. So taking all of the information in of all the pieces you've seen, we notice cues that have been shared between all of them. One of the real points of contention is the use of faux patina on the dials, on the bezels. The whole idea that the watch has been tropicalized. This has been discussed before in a video which I will link in the corner of the screen. But barring that, you get to enjoy this artisanal effect of faded radium and tritium, but at the same time you are wearing a watch that is entirely modern, using all of the components that would make it an excellent everyday wearer. We notice that the presence and scale of these pieces are relatively smaller than their modern counterparts nowadays. And it's a point I normally address that these watches were very much experiments, which is why their developmental history, their real stories behind them, are so fascinating. Reissue divers are definitely a genre within themselves, and they should be enjoyed for that reason. They allow you to get the emotional feeling of a vintage watch while enjoying the actual feeling of a modern one.